Uh, hi, Marcus. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, good. How are all the interviews going for you so far? Uh, I, it just started, so so far I only did one. I mean, it's 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 nine in the morning here, so my day is just starting, but it's going very well so far. Yeah, cool stuff. Um, so at the moment you've got a new uh, live album DVD coming out soon. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the concert and uh, you know the tracks you put on it and uh, you know what you wanted to show to people on this album? Um, well, obviously, we tried to, to capture what was happening on the previous tour. So yes. the CD contains songs from more than just one show. So we actually we recorded pretty much every single show on the whole tour. Yes. But for the album, we, um, we focused on the first European block that we did. So we're talking about like 35, 40 shows, I don't know. And... Um, we tried to put together the the typical kind of Blind Guardian set list as it happened on the road, you know, covering obviously new songs from the previous studio album back to, to the debut album and everything in between. And um, a, a major aspect of a live album, of any live release for us, is also capturing the audience because the audience is a vital part of any Blind Guardian show, you know. It, it doesn't really matter what we do on stage. The audience has to participate and do all the singing cheering and everything only like this the show becomes special yeah. and you know we're lucky uh, to uh, to really capture some really really great shows for the album so we could put together a, a really good mix in our opinion and everybody that that has been to one of the gigs should definitely like that album I guess and people that might even not be familiar with the band uh, that would also be a great way of, of just checking us out because as I said it shows what my Guardian is about yeah I remember the first time I actually got through Blind Guardian it was probably when I got into you guys it was probably about 10 years ago when someone told me to look up the live clip from Valhalla and I, I've, loved uh -huh. it. I've been a huge fan of it ever since uh, I saw that bit of the concert and uh you guys finish the song and the crowd keeps going and then you kind of start it back up for a couple more minutes. I mean, that just got me totally straight away. I was just like, man, this is a great band. Uh, is there any kind of <laughs> moments like that on the DVD? Uh, there is, you know. I mean, we, we, we as I said, the, the crowd singing is, is part of every single Blind Guardian show. You know, there are some songs that we could announce as instrumentals because the crowd would do the vocals anyway and Hansi wouldn't have to do any singing, you know, if... if, if if we're talking about the bar song, for example, you know, Hansi could leave stage if he wanted to. <laughs> it would still be a perfectly fine recording of that song because everybody in the crowd would be singing. Yeah. And there's also, you know, we have them sing at the end of, of The Last Candle and stuff like that. And also Bahala is, is a classic where everybody is always singing. So, yeah, there are those, those goosebump moments uh, on the CD. And we have them every night on, on the tour because, you know, that's... We are very happy to be blessed with, with awesome fans that, that love doing all this. And, you know, the reactions that you sometimes get from them, it's, it's, it's really intensive. For example, uh, whenever we play the song The Lord of the Rings, there are people yeah. bursting in tears just when we announce that the next song is going to be The Lord of the Rings. They start crying. You know, it's such an emotional reaction. Yeah. And, and, and standing there on stage, seeing that, seeing how people are touched by your music, that's that's pretty intense, I have to say. It's a very special moment in, in every single show. Whenever that happens, it's it's special. Yeah, you guys, have, you've released a lot of albums now. I think it's around 12. And, uh, you know, I listen back to some of the old stuff and it's, uh, you know, still holds up really well. I think, you know, the production now is a bit more modern, but I still really love a lot of the stuff of, you know, Follow the Blind and Tales from the Twilight World. Uh, when you look back through your career, is there any albums where you're like, wow, we really got it right on that album? Is there any top favorites, you know, from you when you look back? Uh, it, it, I have to say it's, it's difficult for me to limit it to individual ones because that changes, you know, it, it depends on my mood. But yes, there are some classics that stand out for whatever reason a bit more than others. Yeah. So I would name, from from the old ones, I would have to name two at least, which would be the Imaginations from the Other Side album and Somewhere Far Beyond. Yeah. Because, um, you know, with, 
I think there, there are so many memories tied to, to those periods in time in our career. With Summer Far Beyond, it was the first time that we could tour in Japan and, you know, go to the other side of the planet, and it was a major success there, and that, that really took us on the next level, and with, with Imaginations, you know, it was the first album that we did with Fleming Rasmussen in the Sweet Silence studio, and we spent like half a year or eight months in, in Copenhagen doing it and everything. And again, we learned so much in that production. And uh, again, it was a very, very important album for the career of the band because, again, it took us on the next level. Yeah. And listening back to those albums, you know, I can I can still listen to them from the first song to the last song and still enjoy them. So there's nothing I would change about them. You know, I, I think they are great the way they are. Yeah. Um, and they, they perfectly represent what my Guardian has been about at that point in time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, now, I think the last few times you came to Australia, I'm pretty sure you only played uh, Sydney and Melbourne. I'm actually up here in Brisbane, so I uh, haven't see, had the chance to see you guys live yet. Do you think you'll come down anytime soon to do a full Australian tour? Uh, not anytime soon, that for sure not this year. I mean, we've been on the road for almost two years with the previous tour, and this year we'll just play a handful of festivals over Europe. I think it's 11 or 12 shows. Yeah. And we want to focus on, on songwriting for the next album. Yeah. And once this is released, uh, we'll hit the road again, of course, and we'll for sure be back for Australia. But obviously, it's I, I can't really say where we will be playing then because, uh, you know, our booker is not even working on that tour yet because we just got, like, two songs written. So there's still a lot of work ahead of us. I'm, I'm sure we'll be back to Sydney and Melbourne for sure, but obviously we would love to play more cities in Australia and also... You know, once we're down there, we like to go to New Zealand and, you know, play everywhere, if possible. Yeah. But uh, we will see if, if this will work. I hope so. You know, I would love to come to Brisbane, for example, or whatever, Perth. you know. There's, there's lots of cities that we would like to go to. Because the great thing is, you know, being on the road means we're working for two and a half hours and the rest of the time we're tourists. So, <laughs> yeah. that's, uh, we, we like to go around and check out new cities. And I hope it will work next time. Yeah, for sure. Now, I'm sure, I know if I was in a band, there'd be some cities at the moment I just simply wouldn't want to play, just, you know, because of security risks. I think uh, London and Manchester, there's been a bit of trouble there with terror. Uh, is there any kind of cities that would maybe you wouldn't want to play at the moment just because of, you know, what's going on in the world? No, uh, I, seriously, I don't really, it's, saying I don't care is wrong. Yeah. Obviously, I care if, if, if people get killed or attacked, uh, just because they are at a concert, that, that is a major crime, it sucks, it's bad. So yes, obviously I do care about this, but I don't let fear take over my life. So, I, you know, I'm good to go to London tomorrow, play a show there, and I would go on stage without any fear, without any thoughts about somebody attacking us. Yeah. Because my, my attitude is, you know, if something is supposed to happen, it will happen. Whether I worry about it or not doesn't make any difference. You know, and I mean, I'm doing this since since 30 years. We played thousands of shows. I have no idea how many gigs we played, and nothing ever happened. Nothing. And you know, if something is supposed to happen, it will, and then it will suck. Yes, but you know, me worrying about it or me living my life in fear won't make anything better. So I I, I just don't fear such things. I don't think about them. You know, I'm, I'm good to go on any stage, anywhere on this planet, play a gig, yeah. and I'm fine with that. Yeah, cool. Uh, now, you've toured with some of the, you know, the greatest bands on the earth. You know, you've played all the big festivals, Varka, and uh, you know, all those <laughs> ones. Uh, what have been some of the highlights from your career, some of the, you know, the best bands that you've played alongside, and, you know, some of the, you know, legends that you loved as a kid that you got to meet? Uh, I have to name, uh, in talking about those legends and favorite bands, we played several shows with Black Sabbath, yeah. and uh, Tony Iommi has always been my main influence, so meeting him at some point was pretty special. Yeah. And uh, we also played a show with Kiss at some point, and that was also mind-blowing. And the funny thing is there, you know, we were asked, oh, you know, there's a festival, man. you know, would you like to play whatever festival next year? And we're like, ah, no, we don't want to play next year. We want to do songwriting. Yeah. 
And, you know, our booker called back. He was like, yeah, but, you know, you would be co-headlining. Like, yeah, thank you, but uh, we don't want it. And he called back again. He said, yeah, but you would be co-headlining and the other headliner would be Kiss. And we're like, okay, we're in. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I guess you, you don't get too many chances to play with Kiss today. So, yeah, it, it was it was great. And, you know, you, you meet a lot of people over the years. You know, I met Ronnie James Dio at some point, and he was a wonderful person. And oh, wow. it's, it's, it's one of those great aspects about, you know, being a touring musician and running into into people on the road. You know, you get to meet lots of your heroes back from from the time when you were a kid. And you just, in, in general, you get to make a lot of friends on the road. And the nice thing is, you always meet again. You know, as long as you keep touring, you always run into people again. You know, with the next tour, with the next festival, with whatever. It's And, and whenever that happens, it's, it's a great... Thing, you know, meeting friends again, having a good time at the backstage, sitting there together, talking, having a drink, whatever, and at some point just going on stage and doing your thing. I love it. Yeah. Now, you guys are from Germany, and when I think of, you know, heavy metal, I think, you know, the Germans are some of the most passionate heavy metal fans on the planet. You know, you've got Barken Festival, you've got some, you know, classic bands, the Scorpions, Ramstein, Accept, Halloween, Ed Guys, uh, plenty of good bands from Germany. I'm wondering, do you think the scene in Germany is as strong as it used to be? Sorry, there was a dropout. I, I didn't. I got everything until you started asking the actual question. I didn't hear oh, anything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you think the heavy metal scene in Europe? Do you think it's as strong as it was? You know, when you started out. Uh, I think it is very strong. Yes, I can't really. I, I would even say it's stronger than back then. Because back then, when when we started out in the '80s, you know, it was. Obviously, there were the big bands, you know, there was the new wave of British heavy metal, and, you know, so there were bands like Maiden, and before that, even Sabbath and Purple and everything, but there was also Metallica going strong already and stuff like that. But I think it, it, it became a, an even bigger thing by now, you know. It's a worldwide thing. It's not limited to the underground, you know. I mean, there's tons of metal bands that are very, very successful that enter the charts in high positions and, you know, lots of bands are able to tour the world now. Yeah. And I think it's a very strong scene. And, you know, the, the fans are very loyal and, and the bands are loyal to their fans as well, you know. And I think it's, it's, it's a kind of family atmosphere when whenever you go on tour and you meet the fans, you know, it's it's kind of reunion thing, whenever you play a gig and people are reuniting, coming to the show, and I love it. Yeah, for sure. Now, I know you released uh, Beyond the Mirror in 2015, so it's still a fairly new album, and uh, you guys kind of space your albums out, which is good, because, you know, I don't really like it when bands release an album every year, you know, it's hard to keep up, but uh, have you had any thoughts of, you know, new riffs or new song ideas for a new album yet? Uh, we started working, yes. I mean, we've been on the road until the end of December 2016, so we've been touring for like 21 months. Yeah. And we don't write uh, while we are touring, because if we would try to write something new, um, it would sound like the stuff that we're playing every night, because that's the music that is inside our brains on tour. Yeah. So we always wait until the tour is done, then we empty our brains and start from scratch. And we started working on stuff so that about two songs kind of done, you know, we, we didn't record anything yet, so those songs might still change. But we're working on it, and um, I don't know how long it will take us to finish it. You know, usually there are like four years in between studio albums for us, and that's partially due to our long touring periods. As I said, we've been on the road almost two years. Yeah. But normally it takes us like one and a half years to... to write and compose a new album, then it's another half year to record everything, mix it, whatever, and I guess it will be kind of the same this time. So we, we started working on it, and uh, we're doing our best to come up with another good album. Yeah, for sure. Now, I'll just uh, ask one more question. Uh, you guys formed as Blind Guardian in 1987, you bet you'd been playing a few years previous to that as well. Uh, it's been well over 28 years at least. Um, did you think you was, you know, you would last this long when you first started out? And if it didn't work for you, did you ever have a backup plan for, you know, a different job if the music thing didn't work? Uh, we didn't have any 
backup plans because we were absolutely convinced that we would make it as a band. You know? <laughs> For whatever reason, there was never a doubt. Obviously, there has never been any guarantee that it would work because, I mean, in, in this business, there are no guarantees. Um, but uh, we never had a plan B because a plan B would have been a distraction from plan A. And, you know, we didn't want to be distracted. We, we rehearsed every single day. We, we tried to improve our skills as musicians, as songwriters, as a live act, whatever. And it kind of worked, you know. Obviously, I know luck is, is a part of, of the whole thing. Um, but, uh, you know, we put a lot of hard work into into the band and we're still doing, you know. That attitude never changed. Yeah. And I think the main factor is we love what we're doing. We're doing exactly what we want to do. And uh, only, only if you're doing this, you can really be good at what you're doing. Because if you're doing something that you actually don't really like or you would prefer to do something else you will never put your heart into it but for us it has always been the main thing that's exactly what we wanted to do so yeah there was never a doubt for us at least that we would make it and be successful you know our parents might have different thoughts i don't know but <laughs> for us we have been convinced that we would make it yeah cool stuff well um Thanks very much, Marcus, for taking your time out and talking to me today. You know, I can't wait for the DVD. I was a huge fan oh, of it. Oh, I don't know if you can still hear me. I can still hear you. Yeah, oh, okay. no, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, yeah. Some yeah, I think it's just Skype and the connection here yeah. is not fantastic. But uh, thank you very much, Marcus, for taking your time out today to call me. That's been awesome. Uh, you know, I've been a big fan of the Imaginations DVD, and I can't wait to hear the new one. I'm looking forward to it. So I hope best of luck with it. I hope it does well for you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time and your interest, and uh, I hope to see you on the road whenever we come back to Australia. Excellent. Well, enjoy your day. I will. Same for you. Bye-bye. Okay.